Hey everyone, thanks for waiting just a little bit longer. We're back, and we might have a game. game yeah, two or three. Uh, just confirmed the invite. So, Namshar and Walmu have not played yet. Now, I did say before we wanted to stick to the winner's bracket. Unfortunately, in doing so, means we might be sitting around for a considerable amount of time doing nothing. So, rather than sit around in the winner's bracket for too long, we're going to go down now to the losers, where Namshar and Welmu are set up to play. This is PVZ, but these are also two players we've seen quite a bit on the channel, and they're pretty good players. Uh, Namshar actually getting quite a decent... I think it was, like, what, top 16 or something at DreamHack? Uh, Austin, he has been showing better performances every time we see him, so... It'll certainly be cool to see him play against Welmu. I also want to report that we said if we saw a laser fall down early, he'd still probably do pretty well. And that seems to be the case as he's trucking through that bottom side of the brackets. He does fight against Bly right now, though, so he'll need some uh, luck on his side, I think, to win that one. Mm -hmm. oh, we're getting right into it. Yeah, like I said, they were they were getting started as I messaged them, so they, uh, they paused the countdown timer to invite us, actually. <laughs> ah. Okay. So Frozen Temple, PVZ, no Terrans today, none for you. Not yet, at least. Uh, hopefully, again, we're going to see Happy versus maybe Snoot or something, or versus Nurture, perhaps, later on. Uh, again, Winner's Pack has a lot of games going on, but we didn't want to wait you waiting around for too long, so as we get into this first game, it is my honor to introduce the player in the upper left, the Red Protoss, Welmu. In the bottom right, as the Blue Zerg, now part of Dead Pixels, it's Namshar. So I want to bring up a topic from yesterday, if that's all right with you. Okay. I made a poll after the stream was done about French fries from McDonald's. Oh my God. That's right, you did. And pretty much like 86% or something said they were basically garbage. So without the zombie grub like fan influence, Wait. it looks like people have their heads screwed on tight. But what did you? What was the question? How do you feel about McDonald's fries like 30 minutes after you get them and they've kind of gone cold? They haven't gone cold. Oh my god, this is the whole debate. McDonald's not whether or fries not... go cold like fucking five no, minutes after you don't. order them. You asked the wrong question. <laughs> I swear to god, Rifkin, the debate is not do they taste bad when they're cold? Because they absolutely do. But that 30 minutes after being picked up, they are not cold. Like, my mother has had to pick up McDonald's and then bring it to the house with a 30-minute yeah, drive, yourself. and they are not yeah. cold by then. I phrased it incorrectly just now, because my exact question was, how do you feel about eating McDonald's fries like 30 or so minutes after you order them, and they've cooled off? They, they're they still fine. They're not cold. Nope. I feel like everyone was just delicious. like... 23% edible, 69% basically garbage. I feel like everyone is just anti-McDonald's, which is fine, but that isn't well, part of the question. I actually think that's the case at all. But I did get a very interesting response from another Twitch streamer, Sacrail, some of you guys may know. And it says, uh, Sacrilege, eat them from the bottom of the bag during the car ride home like a man. <laughs> like, yeah. That that's is what it. I end up doing every time. Like, you don't touch the burger till you get in. Eat the fries from the bag. That is what most people do, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but still, you're just, you're just so whiny. Like, every okay, if this is truly the case and everyone is like, yeah, they're gross, like, 30 minutes after they're picked up, mm, and it's not just McDonald's or it's not, you know... Or they just, they think that they, I don't know, are super, super cold. Well then, you guys are just super flippin' picky, and that's all your fault. <laughs> get really aggressive with this, man. I don't know why you get so defensive over your disgusting I french am, fries. I really am. Yeah, because I eat McDonald's french fries so often. <laughs> I gotta defend them. <laughs> you hate french fries in general. I like, do I'm hate french you're fries. you're on the defense for this. <laughs> because it's stupid. You're gonna, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna get McDonald's fries for like, you know, like we got like KFC, right? Or Popeyes rather, we got Popeyes. Popeyes! Yes! I'm gonna get K or uh, uh, McDonald's fries and burgers and stuff, and I'm gonna have to have a 30 minute drive to the, to the venue, and you're gonna be like, um, these are old. Yeah. <laughs> Please take them back, and I'm gonna be like, you son something of that's bitch. not made of cardboard. Thank you. Are uh, we gonna do sub? By the way, thank you, XR first time player. <laughs> thank you for being a first time subscriber here on the channel. Hey uh, silliness aside, though, guys, we did the game shaping up. Wellmu is looking to get bit aggressive here. He's got resonating glaives on the way. Are you no proxy him? gateways or anything quite so silly, but he's looking for some drone kills right off the bat. But my question is, how big is this follow-up? Right now, it's only going to be about three gates, but there's no robo with this. So to me, intuitively, that says more gates. Please, more gates. I would have really expected at least one or two more gateways. So you're right, but it looks like it is just those three gates with an early bit of pressure and the intention to take a third base. And it's getting a couple of drone kills. Um, 
three is not terrible, and they are starting to go down here. And uh, Namshar knows this too, it's just it's going to try and drone, but there is the proxy gateway, it's a good call. The Overlord has not quite scouted, like, a, like you know, red flags. A Twilight Council is a little weird, I see it for a boost. No, see, yeah, I think this is, scouted. by the way, the difference of Overlord's speed or not, because he might not actually get around in time to realize, like, oh, Jesus, there should be a robot on the natural, but I didn't scout that type thing. Yeah. Uh, seems... Gateway's going to finish up, he's doing this on the other side of the rocks, which is kind of interesting. Right, yeah, that is so funny. And he's, you know, he's not scouted, so it still works. It's not a true all-in, it is just four gateways, you know, and it is going to be adept on the wrong side of the map, basically, not defending their third base, but... If Namshar dies to this, it is just, you know, it's just straight up his fault. He didn't get a good scout, he didn't, you know, get some defensive, you know, cautionary roaches, and... You'll, you'll have to pay for it. But the roaches, they're out. They need Ling to basically hold the adepts in place, and they should be pretty good. Four more adepts are on the way, though. Oh, he's more not, not Burger King propaganda, by the way. It's like a clarify. But yeah, warping that over the side of the rocks was not something they expected. Attack does commence, and looks like the adepts are uh, starting to transfer around. Yeah, uh, just trying to full Namshar, because if roaches are, uh, they're not going to die, right? They're not going to surround and die, but they are going to take forever to kill the adepts. You know, especially with resonating glaives, you can take those fights once you got enough adepts, too. That's the thing, and a lot of this transfer, no transfer shenanigans has to do with just buying time to get those extra warp ins. So one has got a lot of money, he's waiting for those cooldowns to come off the gateways as he backs away once again. Four more adepts on the way, but is he actually warping these at home? I think it's around that time where you have to. Like the the roach count really is getting to a very well now now high he's point. just now he's just gonna give away the adepts like this was actually a very awkward way to go about this because if the idea was to distract right so heavily that the adepts are in one spot and the other ones come to the natural base cool I like that move but drones surround these the numbers were half before that transfer even finished and then the ones who transferred were low on health so Wilma loses out on a majority of his army and in fact is in a pretty terrible spot he's got one robo he's going for a second one he knows his roaches and he's trying to get immortals just to be that hard counter but he's given away so much of his of his just potential here transfers yeah. into the natural base a couple drones gonna get picked off again but the worker kill count is only tallying up to about 20 so far for the amount of adepts lost to this like this is gonna be a total of like 13 or 14 that's not a great number uh it's a little questionable uh, I definitely agree. So you're pretty right on those numbers. It's a total here, 27 drones killed. But if he had, if he had, uh, there we go. So pylons on the main ramp, and any amount of uh, force fields and immortals. I think he does okay. At this point, Namshar has had to make so many units to clean up all those adepts that he might as well attack. I'm not sure if this was actually his plan from the get go. Uh, and he's attacking, unfortunately, right as Wellmo is basically preparing for it. If he had attacked yeah. 15 seconds earlier, overages aren't there, sentries aren't in position. Even Ooh. still, he might have a decent job here, or yeah, shot here. The sentries, he was, oh god. Yeah, I don't think he realized there's gonna be slow warpings. He's got to get the pilot touch in the gateway or the nexus, I guess. The other one wasn't. Well, that is so, his game. <laughs> yep. It's uh, uh, it's too many roaches. Rip. Can't protect the immortals. Uh, and he, he ended up winning. So, I mean, it, everything kind of lined up as you were saying, though. I thought that maybe more force fields would be put down, since he was fortunate on that slow warp in. Couldn't buy enough time to get to more immortals, and everything got pretty uh, hectic pretty fast. Just a couple yeah, of adepts. Continue, yeah, I yeah, continue the aggression. He was trying to go for the Dark Shrine. I mean, Walmo had a lot coming up for him, but unfortunately, it's just getting cut down a little bit too short and a little bit too early. Uh, third base dying is going to really hurt. Maybe he's hoping that Dark Shrine can bring him back into this game, but it's really not going to be difficult for Namshar just to make an Overseer or two. Yeah. I think what really hurts is that Lomu, like, besides the accidental sentry warp in off of the Nexus, off of the gateway, he was banking quite a few minerals and gas. So to him, for him to look at this, he was probably like, if only I was using my money, um, or, you know, put down a robo like 10 seconds sooner, put down this pylon 10 seconds sooner, I would have been fine. It's kind of one of those, those hurtful losses, I suppose. The depths are still going crazy. They have to 41 drone kills. So, uh, so <laughs> well, the XR first time player says he subbed because Wellmo game. Well, this is not the greatest looking Wellmo game of all time. I will say Wellmo's given us some of the most fun games we've had in the past. I was really excited to grab his match port, so I'm glad to see you are a Wellmo answer. Yeah. These are uh, all the keys. They actually might hold this, as silly as that is. No, Overseer's nearby, but it's holding it enough. He's been continuing to get adept damage on the other side of the map and killing drones, so I mean, worker counts are going to be somewhat even. 
Is this enough for Wilma back in the game despite losing that third? I mean, he's gonna if shut he, down the, like, the entire army. If he had offensive DTs right now, killing a base, I'd be like, okay, here we go. This is this is still a game, but the DTs were purely defensive. Overseers on the way. There's already sport crawlers, so detection wasn't ever really a problem. And um, Wilma, I guess you could try an all in with these. Like, see, there's detection. Just turn him into Archons. Maybe hope something happens. The depths are not doing anything. But if he does nothing, then this, this game is obviously going in favor of Namshar, despite 44 workers killed from him. <laughs> it's a damn McDonald's discussion. Uh, everything getting cleaned up. This has been a real Thorn and Namshar side, so it's a little surprising that it took us so long to clean it up, but finally, no need to worry about those Adept warp ins. Uh, the Archons were made from DTs, so he's trying to get somewhat of an army with, I guess, plus two weapons. I had no idea Namshar still didn't have speed, by the way. That's uh, a little crazy. There goes the gateway. Well, no, I don't... Mm, it's not happening. It's, it's not gonna happen. About, uh quarter, I don't know, like a third of Namshar's army supply, militia core, uh, it doesn't go down. Lings will come in here, helps around all those units. There are a lot of force fields, certainly the Archons need some help here, there's only two of them. I mean, they've got the damage. For con con I'm actually just, I'm more worried about them breaking their force fields at this point, though. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be useless. Um, yeah, this is, oh, the Corrosive Bibles and the Sentries, okay. Just sentries left over, obviously cannot hold a, a very good fight. I mean, surprisingly getting cleaned up here because once again, Wilmu has sent adepts into the natural and killed even more drones from Namshire. Oh my god, 57, 58 drones. Why, god, why? <laughs> but he couldn't get his third up. And uh, his army at all, or? did mostly die. No. Because uh, the stream died for a second, but we're on, we're still online, so don't, don't panic. I was just curious what happened. Oh yeah, yeah, zero drop frames, I have no idea. Well, <laughs> this looks like for Wellman once again, like he did a great job fighting from an impossible spot in this game, but it looks like game number one is uh, still destined to go to Namshar at this rate. Yeah. No army supply left over here, so that Dark Templar trick won't work again, and unfortunately, as we see, it's a little too much. So GG, Namshar gonna take that first game. Yeah. Uh, now, just to note, Wilmu said at some point he has to go check on food, <laughs> so I don't know when that's gonna come. If that's now, we'll take a break. If it's after the series, then we don't have to worry about it. But, uh, try and get this next game here ASAP. I'm gonna, I'm gonna message him and let me see. Oh. Okay, well, you see that. So, let's talk about real quick. The Alima League is coming back tomorrow. So, I know a lot of fans of Beja TV are fans of Alima League and vice versa. So, remember to check in tomorrow at 9 a.m. EST or EDT, I forget which one it is. And um, even if this were to go to day two, which I don't think it will, um, they've been doing something very odd recently where they've been telling us that these qualifiers like, will last even three days and they will only last one so I don't well know. i don't know it's just it's more that's been inconsistent and then day two consisted of like three matches total so i don't i don't know what any of that means yeah. to us all i know this is we cast as much as we can today it does look like Wellmu has uh oh. food or something so yeah um i guess ads and we'll see you guys in a couple Welcome back, everyone. We are getting into game number two. Well, we actually didn't take very long at all to cook his food, so it was a little unfortunate. But we got here just in time. So on the bottom left of Ruins of Endion, he is up one. It is the blue Zerg Namshar. Woo! Yeah, Namshar's uh, ZVP was looking pretty impressive. Again, like watching him beat Harson was shocking and astounding to me, so... That's so crazy they can take on this guy. In the bottom right, we'll see if we can bring it back. It's going to be the red Protoss Wellmu. Uh, also, ask the admin. There's no guarantees because DreamHack doesn't necessarily do that. Um, but we might be able to get... It, it, happy and Sword Over still playing. I asked if they can basically hold if Happy wins, hold if Happy versus Nurture. We'd like to cast that next type thing. So, fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. Mm, that'd be cool. I still got a ways to go in this tournament because, after all, there is also this loser's bracket. So, <clears throat> the winner's bracket is starting to really shape up. And it will, I, I'm going to oh. guess, be Showtime versus Snoot. We have so much more important information to report. Harstam has finally gotten into his house. Well, great. 
you know. Those who missed it at the start of stream, Harslam, it was not participating in these qualifiers today because he locked himself out of his house. Yeah. Definitely a mistake. Well, congratulations to him. Unfortunately, it's too late. Uh, but as I was saying, there's still, you know, all of the top bracket. It's, you know, we're going basically to the last because only one qualifier from each winner and lower bracket. And the lower bracket always takes forever to catch up. Yeah. Uh, real quick, by the way, too, Will Lander, thank you so much for the six-month resub. Awesome stuff, man. Man, I started drinking a Red Bull, and my body was like, ugh, carbonation. Let's just burp that all out. I'm eating to the stream. Oh. I'm eating you. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're welcome. I'm kind of used to that. Ugh. You would... You are a very gross person to hang around sometimes. If she's not so, busy, like, a lot of you guys probably say, you're like, oh, you know, Rifkin's pretty lucky. You know, he gets to go to these events and stay with Zombie. She's a beautiful girl. It must be the life. No. Let me tell you guys. It's full of her just fucking burping all over the place or trying to, like, chew her food in her mouth and tap <laughs> me on the shoulder so I look and go, and show me everything inside of it. Like, Zombie Grub is yeah, not true. what you guys think she is, okay? That's really only my two disgusting things that I do because, you know... I'm a girl, so I don't fart. And, you know what? It's uh... not disgusting, but she'll she'll shame you too. She'll make you feel bad about pooping in the hotel room, man. <laughs> Poor Fear yeah. Dragon had to go downstairs to the lobby because he, he started... couldn't poop in our hotel room because of zombie grub. I'm using the I bathroom, and she just starts laughing. I fart a little <laughs> bit while in the bathroom, and she just starts laughing. And you hear this no, from the bathroom. No, she okay. She's a terrible he, person. He started out with, you know, even if it sounds like I'm pooping, I'm, I'm definitely not. So don't poop shame me. And then he starts giggling at himself. And I hear him in the bathroom. Like we all hear him, so we start laughing. And he, <laughs> okay, he starts laughing like that now. Anyway, and he feels so self-conscious. So <laughs> Okay, this is a very normal Ruins of Endion game, just real quick here. But, like, the burping thing. I really don't think burping's that bad. But for whatever reason, Rifkin thinks it's super duper gross. Like, if you burp, like, really loud in someone's burping. face, then okay, that's kind of gross, because you, like, smell it too, right? But you burp on, like, the internet. Okay. Like, what does it okay. matter? Yo, okay, marijuana's like a gateway drug to harder things, right? Oh, God. Burping's like a gateway body movement towards, like, throwing up, okay? Uh, uh. I mean, if you're they're both you're disgusting. Sick. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, so, you mentioned that this was. Let's bring it back to the game. <laughs> you mentioned that this was a standard game, and it definitely is. You got the rocks being knocked down. You got the Stargate opening out of Wamu. This is everything going according to plan. As he takes his third, that every Protoss should and would expect on this map. But this is where I feel like this becomes actually problematic. While this is a strong way to open and a strong way to play, it still presents a very, very predictable playstyle. And if every protest is doing this always, as we've witnessed through this tournament against many others, that's when Zerg suddenly realizing, oh, well, if this is exactly what it's going to be and I don't have to do guesswork, you can play so much better around it. Yeah. That is certainly true. I mean, you go for a double like evolution chamber, something allowed of you because you know that you're going to go for a macro game, or maybe in, you know, in other cases, be a little greedy. So we'll see if that's going to be for just the missile upgrades. He is bothering to get a Roach Warren, so in Namshire, it's kind of odd. I kind of forgot about it because the last game got a little bit hectic real quick. Namshire has been going for almost old school ZVP. Like, I'm talking Roaches into Roach Hydra, which just doesn't seem to be as good anymore as, like, you know, the Ling Bane Ling or Ling Bane Ling Hydra or straight to Hydras and then Lurkers, you know? Like, Roaches, they seem to only be for, like, early game all ins or just don't even bother making them. So, I guess he's gonna be in the Namshire and actually make Roaches. Otherwise, I would say, okay, go for plus one missile, plus one melee, and go for a huge attack with Ling Hydra. Because you see a lot of that in Ruins of Endion. You break down these rocks and suddenly you're on their fourth base really quickly. But there's the 1-1 one, one with Carapace. So Hydra's then is put down pretty quickly. Still no Roach speed, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Namshire's changed things up a little bit. I just do. I just recall the last qualifier we saw him in. Whatever one that was. Maybe for Austin, maybe not. Uh, he did go for, like, very old ways of ZVP. ZVP. Yeah, and, that's and for... I think it cost for... him a series. I think it's for Ting, right? Oh, uh, it might have been Ting. Oh. Gosh, we're casting so much, it really is starting to blur together, unfortunately. <laughs> I remember a time when we could actually accurately quote and cite matches. <laughs> Tell people, oh yeah, this player played in this exact tournament. <laughs> Those days are long and gone behind us, unfortunately. 
Uh, while well, this goes on, by the way, chat apparently is catching up with previous conversations, so <laughs> trying not to get distracted by it. The Phoenix Rass is great. He's killed some drones. In fact, killing a total of like seven for pretty much no repercussions, great. This is the type of thing you want to have happen. Unfortunately, though, in doing so, this also means these Phoenix don't have any energy for the potential Hydras coming up next. He doesn't even have information about that northern base, hasn't actually seen the fourth. So everything kind of going according to plan for Namshart, despite a couple of hiccups through these losses. Wow. Wilmo hasn't gotten anything. Like, all the tech he put in the natural is just unscouted by these phoenixes, so... It's actually a big question mark. Oh, he'll see the Hydralis now, I suppose. Okay, that's that's good, at least. Not that it's completely unexpected. But there weren't any, um... There's the Unith tab. There weren't any roaches added to this, and he didn't bother getting that speed, so it is just going to be Ling Hydra! With some pretty good upgrades. We'll see if he adds on a Lurker Den right after this Hydra upgrade finishes. We have Wilmo thinking about a fourth base. It's around that time, because they both got to three bases so easily. And of course, Storm probably on the way as well. But uh, they're not gonna have any battles collide quite yet. They are still prepping. Stop talking shit about me. You are the worst. Sometimes. Especially oh, we got one person topic. to leave because he doesn't like he doesn't like our humor. Oh no! What the fuck are these drones doing? Well, as unfortunate as it is to lose the person, to let you guys know, if you do need someone else to go, because we are a bit silly, uh, you got Wardy streaming in English by the looks of it, Emil in Polish, you got Take TV in German, Ogaming in French, there are other options. Uh, I do want to point out, though, I don't know if anyone's casting his game, but Happy is apparently streaming his qualifiers, did not realize, so uh, that game that we hope to maybe get into later, you can catch on his stream if we miss it. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Namshar, I suppose, is waiting for his 2-2 in Lurker Den. Mm, he does break on the rocks, but this isn't really... Oh, I didn't even notice on the production tab. The drops? Yeah, I didn't realize that either. So with five overlords, I mean, this is either something you just send to the main and hope the Hydras do the best they can before they die, and that looks to be the case, or you can just get around the army. But unfortunately, timing may not persist to be that great. Phoenixes are here ready. You can't unload those Hydras one at a time. You're going to have a bad time if you do. And Namshar just took over half of his army away. That means they're not defending. The rest of the army goes up here. There's nothing yeah, at home. I, he, I think he was hoping to hit before Wellwood did, <laughs> distract and keep Wellwood busy at home. But now awkwardly realizing the situation, Namshar has to make a choice. Go back home or keep going with the attack. Looks like he's going to go with the attack, but the Phoenixes can be sent this way to catch them. Zealots on the top right side, left side, excuse me, also going to drive off drones, so losing mining over there. And Namshar, I feel, has... He's either done the craftiest, craziest, greatest thing, or he's just defeated himself. His overlords, they're supposed to be caught by these Phoenixes, but then they weren't. Uh, now the Phoenixes can't help that much against that many Hydras. <laughs> The Mothership Corps brought to the main, anticipating the drop, so the Hydras wrecked the third base. This has got a little bit more base trading than I thought it would, but it's kind of working for Namshar. Uh, Problem is, blinking. actually, he takes the base in the top right, but even then, the Zelt's already on top of it. Yeah. Everything uh, is blinking. It's hard to keep track of all the action, but I don't think Namshar can actually break the like the, the Templar and stuff in the main. There's going to be Storms. There's going to be Phoenix. There's going to be Overcharges. So he's guaranteed to lose everything on his side of the field. Well, he's not guaranteed to kill everything for well -known. Uh, yes, I, I think yes. This is this still a very big army, and there's nothing at the third base. The fourth base is going to go down. This base that's trying to be taken is going to, well, obviously not going to work out. And at least he had an escape path. It's actually a little bit questionable with these rocks working down, but he does escape. And his army isn't, like, the worst, especially if he's able to catch half of Wemble's army, or three-fourths, whatever you want to call this part of the army, without storms. Uh, Wemble's going to be a little, like, you know, scared of using them on the drones like this, but he still has quite a few more. I actually don't know how Namtra can split against, what is that, like five storms? I don't, I don't think you can. I don't know, this is, <laughs> uh, I mean, as said, like he was guaranteed to lose everything on the other side of the map, and Namtra's gonna have to take a fight at some point, because if he doesn't, oh, he will just simply get obliterated due to losing all his buildings. Oh. Storm hitting the overlords, oh. oh, this is, oh, this is the sickest base. It's not even intentional, I don't think, but it's working. He wastes like three storms on these empty overlords. Now he's had nothing more. for the high. Oh my God. So good, Stopping Grub! They are pretty Do damn it. good. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna be able to do fine. Of course, there's more storms backing this up, so even if he did live with a number of Hydras, it wouldn't have worked. GG! Over ties it up, 1-1. One, one. That was just very unlucky for Nipshar. <laughs> That's quite unfortunate for him. Um, picking up those overlords was a cool idea, but not scouting 
for that was a bad idea, and uh, just Hydras will probably never do that well in a base trade scenario. Yeah. Alright, game number three is already up, so we're going to hold the ads, guys. We're going to hop right into it. Uh, I do want to point out, Happy and Sort of are in game three currently. We're going to start game three here, so I'm hoping things time out to that we can still cast the uh, follow-up to that. Mm. Oh, boy. Red Bull's so good. Blueberry Red Bull is so good. Addendum. Alright, next map is going to be Frost. It's the last map of the series. And this is a loser's bracket. We swapped over. So whoever loses, loses. For realties. I'll probably go back up to the winner's bracket if possible. Hopefully possible. Because it is getting to that qualification point. And we want to be able to cast the qualifier. Yeah. Uh, still, still trying to coordinate with the admin. I mean, again, it's no guarantee that we actually get to cast. Like, sort of might even win too, like uh, whatever. But um, just trying to coordinate our matches so that we can ride out the top half of the bracket somewhere, somehow, some way, some easy. So even if we don't get that side, Beastier, Zanster, Winterplay, Showtime. There's a lot of options available to us. Uh, I held that burp in just for you. You are the kindest, most generous woman I know. All right, game I number really three, can. tied up one to one. And spawning here on the bottom left side of Frost, we've got the Blue Zerg, Namshar. On the bottom right, as the Red Protoss, he is Welmu. Okay, so I've pretty much got this figured out at this point. Uh, and here's here's basically how the follow-up to this is going to go. If Happy wins his series versus sh uh, sort of they should only have to wait a maximum of like five to ten minutes with how quickly this series is going if for whatever reason they can't be held though and they don't want to wait and they're going to cause a fuss if they do we do have the option of casting showtime's semifinals instead so we will have something after this which will be kind of nice and hopefully should be kind of fluid because for us we're looking at minimizing downtime and just getting game after game after game which will be nice yep that's the way you don't go crazy with these long casts did you know we are almost four hours into this cast no, actually, this has been pretty fun, so time's kind of been flying. Yeah. I was really tired earlier. I'm kind of awake now. I, I've i always been in this weird state of tired, but I don't feel tired because I'm so tired, I think. You know, like when you're hungry, you're sort of confused, like extreme hungerness with just not being hungry? No? Okay. I get that I mean, feeling sometimes. I kind of know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's like eight hours in, you don't really realize that you haven't eaten, so you like your stomach isn't like, hey, I'm hungry. So my... It's more like, uh, I kind of, I kind of like have this weird feeling, and you're like, oh, that's right, I'm hungry. Well, the problem with that comes in where I, <laughs> I think that was a lot more of a problem for me before. I've got my eating a lot more like under control nowadays, but I used to be like, anytime we go two minute commercial break, I'm like, I could use a sandwich right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Please. Oh, I mean, I'm not saying I'm like that 100% of the time. But, like, even when we're busy, like, hell to boot time, you know? That's, like, the only time that I can forget. I, um, I picked up Sculpture again, and that was also one of those times where I could forget if I was really into sculpting. Because it's been, like, eight hours. Super bad you ever, for your back. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> you ever do, like, you know, ghosts? Get some guy behind you, helping you do the pottery? I'm not doing um, pottery on, like, a wheel, <laughs> so no. <laughs> <laughs> if he wants to help me by pushing a little stick into a couple of, like, Sculpey, you know, faces, then that's that's on him. <laughs> Sexy. This is, like, <laughs> all kinds of, like, fantasy hey. coming through. All right, so, by the way, with Frost, I think the same problems persist that we've seen, not just today, but what we kind of predicted, where I don't know how much Wellmoo's actually playing to play this game past three bases. We do have a Stargate opener, though, so when I make that statement, it's interesting that he goes for this, because if it's not going to be some sort of all-in, and he is going to try and play macro, I think there are a lot of holes and openings that make it difficult for Protoss to do that right now. At the same time, though, Namshire has been more inclined to play like Ling Hydra or into Lurkers than he has necessarily that weird, crazy Baneling style that we saw out of Snoot, for example, mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah. So this may not be too problematic. We'll see. Very different styles here. Now, I was checking both their visions. Once again, Namshire a little in the dark because he is not going for early overload speed that we see Snoot doing like every single game. But he will be able to get this overlord in because there's no phoenixes to stop him. It was an oracle and it was scouted. So if there were, like, you know, extra gateways or something like that, he'd be able to see it. 
Not the case, though. Uh, well, I'm probably looking towards that third base. It'll be interesting where he takes it. He should be taking it over here. Yeah, because if he takes it here, then just the tide is on the bridge, and it's just bad news. Same deal for Namshar. Oroka comes in, immediately runs away. His two queens are ready in a spore crawler anyway. A couple of adepts are going to look to take away the queens from the front lines, or rather the, the back lines, I should say, to the front lines. But still with the spore crawlers, the oracles are better off actually helping the adepts, trying to kill... Um, queens and drones and, and whatnot, and they are trying to get any harassment done. Well, the transfers were pretty good before. The oracles are not looking too bad now. Mm, not gonna go for it. Mm, the oracles could definitely kill that queen. I guess they don't want to. Well, behind this, Wemo of course takes a third, gets a Sim City up, going for double Robo because we don't want, or he doesn't want. A repeat of that first game where, you know, even 10 seconds on yeah. <laughs> the on the macro front and, and suddenly you're in trouble to a counterattack. So he's got to get up that pretty quickly. So let's take his overload. It's a little funny. And his adept to harass looks like it has stopped. They've just left his oracles. They're still alive. I, okay, they're being used for stasis traps. That's not so bad. Again, he probably could have gotten something more. He could have gotten the queen. Maybe if he was really on top of his micro, got a few more drones. But just goes back home. Stasis traps, I feel will be very useful, because not only can you put it here for the obvious reason for Stacey Trap to stop units, but you can also put it here for scouting, if you don't have anything else that's that's really useful, like an Observer, for instance, <laughs> which he's only just now getting the Robos. I I like Stacey Traps for a lot of different reasons, and most of the time, it is enough to catch your opponent off guard. Rarely do we see them be like the influencer on like whether a game is won or lost, but sometimes, if you send those links in too early, you know? So uh, maybe catch him, maybe they don't. Either way, uh, unfortunately, Wabu didn't really get a whole hell of a lot done. He's still transferring the Adepts. They're still looking to work some magic to get the natural base of Namshar once again, starting to kill some drones. Oh my god. These, these Adepts... Namshar is getting to be such a good player, right? And like, kudos to him. We've been watching for a long time. He's, a, he's casting the channel. But he still has these like wide open weaknesses, you know? Where just sometimes like... <sighs> yeah. Like you could you you were just you're just so close to being on lockdown at home and then adapts keep going to your base. Um, this actually is really hit into his timing. So this is supposed to attack maybe like twenty seconds earlier. The queens probably should have been already on their way over, and Wemu just looks really well set up for this. I don't think this is gonna work from Namshire. I really don't. There's no speed here, so the roaches aren't doing a great job of uh, catching up and reinforcing. I like removing the pylon. I'm gonna have to worry about that overcharge. First out, first ran across the bows going it. Of course, there's going to be those stasis traps, though. This going to be great. Stops almost all the Ravagers. And of course, mm. you can't you can't break these out. You can't do anything about it. They're just going to slowly sit there and maybe die later on. More stasis traps coming down. Lots of cannons to guard this in. Wellmu has such a sick defense, especially with the Immortals here. He's going to trap the Queens, and they can transfuse for days, but they're going to die. No Curse of Bows really break those force fields and escape them. So the second he's Curse of Bows on top of the army. Looks like that'll work there. Only a Lingus caught the second, uh, or I guess third, Stasis trap. Still another one by those cannons, of course, but the Immortals looking to hold strong, being kept on the back line. Most of their barriers are already on cooldown, however. A little bit fragile, but that Roach count has dwindled pretty heavily. Namshire no longer has a massive army lead. He's going to try and get more Ravagers, which are going to be great, but he's already lost so much on this attack. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, hmm. I guess one thing, all the Stasis traps are gone, and a lot of the pylons have been used up, and the cannons are also gone. That's like that's something, but the immortal count still living is always the worrying part because then their shields get back up and they're they're, they're once again very very difficult to kill. Upgrade about the finish for Wilmo as well. I didn't realize he had never gone to Twilight Council. Wow, it's pretty late, but it doesn't matter. Now the immortals are the most important part. And while they aren't countering anything per se because there's no roaches anymore, they're doing a lot of damage. They're soaking a lot of damage. They're not dying very easily. No, definitely not. Uh, shots can just land on top of all these immortals. It's keeping their barriers on cooldown, which is good, but there's no consistent follow-up to actually finish them off after. There's no attack to actually get in there and kill them. So, a little unfortunate there for Namshar. As this continues to be a little bit all-in, like, he's really not investing in something. There's no, there's no Spire for the swap-out, which would be phenomenal in this position, I just want to note. But there's also no attack, no upgrades, no nothing. So this is do or die for him, unfortunately. It looks like it's getting closer to die rather than do. As well, he keeps advancing that front line, pushing those immortals in. Oh, wow. This is the loosest bracket. It's game three, and everyone's life is on the line. There's no more second chances after this. He pushed into a couple of, like, one too many corrosive vials, you know? And these actually, these immortals are getting really low. They're going to, once again, 
almost died to those corrosive biles, but okay, three more corrosive biles, suddenly like three immortals go down. That's pretty impressive, yeah. but still not enough. Uh, one was the one with the better army, even with three immortals down. He's going to his upgrades as well. Namshar just really has not invested anything into the future, like not even Roach Speed. That's that's how much he was all in with this. So even if he tries to macro out of it, it's like starting from zero. Like it's it's not even a lair, is it? Oh yeah, no wonder he never got speed and he never got a lair. Well, like, uh, damn. <laughs> that aside, I mean, he was really looking to make Ravagers be what won this, and of course with Ravagers, you don't need speed upgrades. That's certainly true, right? But the reinforcements were damn slow. That probably played a little bit of a part. Now the Lings are getting surrounded, and there go the Immortals to those Corrosive Biles. Just exactly what I was talking about, but actually coming into effect here. And most of them are going down. Suddenly, Namshar takes a great fight. Even, oh, gets but, an oracle with those Curse of Vials. But as good as this is, you mentioned no layer, and now we got DTs warping in. Oh, oh dear, that's... Mm, they can just kill a Spore Crawler and continue on their merry way. Oh dear, oh dear. Or just kill the army, I suppose. Either one. I was probably going to win with this move. He was probably going to win regardless. I mean, he's someone with the fourth base and more production to replace those immortals, but... Oh, those DTs... Oh, I guess Namshar saw them, luckily. He's returning home, so the Swore Crawlers aren't going to die, but they can be used offensively now. Namshar's attack is done. He cannot attack into DTs without this lair being finished. I mean, Creep spread a Spore Crawler. I don't know. <laughs> but this is an interesting kind of stale situation we've now found ourselves in, because I don't think... Either one feels confident. Like, I mean, one was just expanded to a fourth. That's going to feel damn good. But at the same time, he did take such a bad fight. I think that's why he's tentative and hesitant to keep pushing. Yeah, those corrosive vials are just... They're great. They're... They're on point is what they were. Yeah, there are so many of them that if you were going to continue pushing in, I guess there was, you know, there was inevitable you're going to get hit by some. So that's definitely on well move. But um, eventually he'll just probably split or have a, you know, too big of an army. It doesn't even matter anymore. Uh, Ling attack is going to just barely not get the stasis, stasis. word. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's off by like one grid, one pixel point. Uh, still the army's going to be oh. able to take this on. Immortals blasting away. And of course, Archon's even warping in. Merging in, however you want to phrase that. Uh, more Ravagers on the way. We finally have those Overseers coming in. So DTs will no longer be as problematic. But still, plus two weapon upgrades on this army over just nothing for Namshar. I mean, still, even with the layer very all in with this build and no tech, no follow through behind it, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. They said, oh, Warpers has got a lot of gross of files raining hell from above. But even then, you just can't take on the Archons. Uh -huh. And the Immortal Count is once again up to a point that's just silly. It's, uh, <laughs> they're not dying. This is the last of Namshar's army and the last game of his tournament. Basically, he's out, and Wellmo will continue on to face, I mean, a very, very long road to the loser's bracket, but who does him? All right, GG gets called. We also have Zanster, who just advanced over BC, so I'm hoping we can actually hit them up really quick and do Zanster versus Showtime. Uh, hey, we want to cast you versus Showtime, please. Uh, we'll go to a break, guys, while we sort this out. We should be able to just hop into this really quick afterwards, though. So, ZVP with Zancer and Showtime, as if we haven't seen enough ZVP today. Eat your hearts out, guys. We'll be back after a break.